Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with the 24th installment of Black Girls on Television. Empire and Scandal, you guys. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys. So, Empire. Mm, Hakeem is the new CEO. Cookie is the head of uh, creative direction. Andre will continue to be the CFO and uh, the president of Gutta Life Records. Jamal is giving up his vice president position and he is going to focus more on his music and uh, Hakeem can give a fuck about Lucius. He has this great big meeting, calls in all the old uh, Empire employees, does a song. Of course, gotta always do a song before you make a big announcement, right? It's either before the song or after the song, some sort of announcement. He reveals the new logo for Empire. You know, it's a new day, you guys, and the logo is of his face singing to the mic. Cookie looks at Andre like this nigga done lost his mind. Now, Lucius, because he's on the outs, he's making his video. There's a reporter there and she's kind of crass, you know, she's kind of, <laughs> she's asking him questions. Oh, so, you know, what's going to happen with you now that you're not at Empire? You know, he said, like, I give it three months. I'll be back with no problems. She was just like, yeah, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, they're coming after you. It's personal. You didn't have any idea that Mimi was coming for you. Yeah, I knew, you know, <laughs> they snuck up on that ass, right? Okay, that's it. Time for you to go. But of course she got up under Lucius's skin because nobody and I mean nobody is going to take his company away from him. Andre and Rhonda, you know, they're talking. And uh, you know what, Andre, he said he's having these visions. God is sending them these visions. He knows that she didn't just fall down them stairs, that either somebody pushed her or that she, um, or something happened for her to fall. Ah, uh, you know what, Andre, nigga, you is crazy. You know, you ain't been taking your medication right. No, 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 I'm telling you, God is sending me these visions. Look, I don't need God. Okay, that's Rhonda's feelings. I don't have faith. What I need is to get back to work. I'm tired of being in this house. I feel like I'm going to go crazy. I heard that Camilla is going to have a fashion department at Empire. Is that true? Andre says, yes. Well, can you get me a job there? I don't see why I cannot. Okay, but you need to go to grief counseling with me at church. That has to be the deal. So she says, okay. So they go to grief counseling. And my theory is that the pastor might have pushed her down the stairs, you guys. So somebody ain't right about Rev, okay? I'm just not really sure. And I will never forget when he told Andre that some things you just got to do yourself. Remember when he was telling him about that? So um, something tells me that pastor got a shady past. But anyway, they're talking. Andre uh, asks her if she's cheating. She was like, what the fuck? No, where is this coming from? Of course I'm not cheating. Pastor says, well... Maybe you should ask Andre why he feels like you might be cheating. And she's like, I know why the nigga might think I'm cheating is because he's not taking his medication. We need to go back to the doctor and get it recalibrated because he's just been off all this time. Andre is just like, you know, he's telling the pastor about the visions and all that. And she was just like, you don't see anything wrong with this? Oh, I see what this is. This is an ambush. You guys just jumping on me. This ain't about trying to get Andre and Rhonda back together right. Yeah, I ain't here for the bullshit. Pastor says... Well, you don't have to worry about it. I know you want him to go to the doctor and be in the doctor's care, but he's in God's care. And as long as he's in God's hands, he ain't got nothing else to worry about. So, yeah, you guys, something ain't... He's saying and doing all the right things, but some seem a little slimy about old Rev. Cookie and Lucius looks like their relationship is getting better. You know, she's helping them pick out music. Oh, yeah, that's hot, you know. We listen to a couple of chords on the damn piano, and all of a sudden, you know what, Lucius, that's your best work you ever done. I was sitting here thinking, like, it's seven notes on the fucking piano. How is it the best? Anyway, while they're in there listening to some of Lucius's work, Andre bust in and was just like, oh, Camilla's going crazy. She slashed the budget for Lucius's video. Oh, why the fuck she do that? Lucius pissed now. He, go, he about to beat somebody ass. You know, C Cookie is just like, wait a minute, hold on. You can't go off yet. We still trying to get Hakeem to get dirt on Mimi. So just, just hold on. It's going to be all right. But shit is getting dire, and Cookie knows that she's not going to be able to hold Lucius off forever. Now, Jamal, he and Precious are having a walk outside of the Empire um, building. A so-called fan walks up. He asks Jamal, why did he? And then they do, a, they do a rousing rendition of flip, flop, flip, flippity, flop. Okay, and they got some damn... 
<laughs> flip flops. All right. And they are talking about the fact that Jamal now is not gay, that he's sexually fluid, you guys. Yeah, they irritated as fuck about it too. Jamal is pissed. He thinks that Jameson is the one that sent them guys over, but it turns out that it's actually Lucius that is sabotaging his career. And you know, he's got this Asa that he's trying to he's trying to win. And of course he's going against Lucius. And you know Lucius is always trying to look for self first. So now Jamal is mad at Lucius and you guys know it's a cycle every episode. Somebody is pissed the fuck off with Lucius. Now Hakeem, his whole little problem is he's still in love with little Senorita. He and her are in his office one day and Camilla walks in. What is she doing here? He is just like, oh baby, you know what? Go on downstairs. I, I'll be with you in a little while. Telling that to Senorita. Then he tells Camilla, look, she's a big part of Empire. I'm not going to get rid of her. I told you you need to get rid of her. I'm trying to do all of this for you. I'm trying to make sure that Mimi leaves me all of her um, you know her stock in the company and I need you to not have her around so we can be together and he's like listen I'm trying to do this legit I want everybody to know that I earned this position 19 years old no business experience not really even an education as far as these things are concerned you know just that he got the look y'all <laughs> So, she gonna have to get with the program. Oh, Senorita ain't going no damn where. So, later on, Cookie is having a board meeting. I guess, you know, creative director. She's trying to get her folks together. And uh, Jamal busts in. It was Lucius who's sabotaging me. Cookie is trying to calm him down. Don't worry about it. We gonna get the Ace of Gay Boys back on your side, okay? Just do what you gotta do. It's all good. She's trying to hold that, you know, that's a problem over here. She got Lucius mad. She got Jamal mad. Then we find out that Camilla has also slashed the budget for Tiana's tour and Tiana is Cookie's baby remember so that's the next problem okay C Camilla is slashing budgets left and right so Cookie goes to tell Tiana you know what we're gonna have to put your tour on hold T Tiana is pissed what? Is it because Hakeem is fucking Senorita? Do he want me to sleep with him too? This don't make no damn sense. I'm out of here. You know, Cookie's trying to calm her down. She's like, you know what? I'm tired of this shit. Okay, them girls are not as good as me. They're not even good enough to open for me. Now Cookie has an idea. So she goes and she tells Camilla, listen, how about we put Mirage a trois, um as the opening act for Tiana? Okay, that got the tour. They'll be gone for three, four months. Senorita be out your hair and you can be with Hakeem. All right, Camilla loves that idea. Oh my God, Hakeem, the 19 year old with the look all to myself. Okay, let's do that. Cookie tells Senorita and ha Hakeem that they're going on tour. Hakeem is mad. Mom, you can't be making decisions without me. She's like, look, nigga, I'm trying to save your damn neck. You the one fucked it up and got the family all off, the, off track for this company. I'm trying to get the company back. All right, I'm doing this for us. Senorita's like, no, 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 I think it's a good idea. The girls are excited about going on tours, you know, so we, we gonna go. Cookie is just like, you gonna lose your fucking family unless you fix this, so you better come up with something. Now back to Jamal, because he's pissed about all this shit with Lucius and him being sexually fluid and whatnot. <laughs> um, he has a Asa gathering, some kind of, you know, performance that he's got to do, and, uh, you know, he comes out, he's tough. You know, I never like to put my business, my family business in the streets. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And then he sings this damn song. And there's something about his daddy being the devil and being a hater. And, you know, he's nothing like him. And people say he like him. And, you know, he's a fake and he's a fraud. Okay, the nigga real name ain't even Lucius. I don't really know why that's such a big deal, considering many celebrities change their names, especially rappers. But, okay. So the reporter goes back to Lucius. Oh, your son called you in inauthentic what do you have to say about that and Lucius was like you know what that was personal that was something I shared with him I didn't want it to get out but whatever it's out now but that's all right because I'm not even Lucius Lyon really you guys know the story of Lucius Lyon you don't know the story of how I became Lucius Lyons oh yes honey I used to be a orphan with no money and nowhere to go, okay? And I'm going to tell you that story exclusively. So now the reporter's just like, oh, I got the exclusive on who is Lucius Lyons. Now, Rhonda, because she fed up with Andre and his bullshit, you know, she goes back to Empire and she finds Cookie. She's like, Cookie, can you please tell your son where the fuck I was last night? She was in my office telling me about an argument that she heard Camilla having with Mimi. Rhonda's like, yeah, I'm trying to look out for your damn family. You you, you uh, accusing me of cheating. The nigga is parent annoyed and I'm tired of it. Everybody's falling apart. Jamal takes it upon himself to go talk to Hakeem. Look, you're natural at this. You got this, okay? But you need to prove to the family that you can fix this problem. We got to do something about Camilla. So, 
Hakeem does what he does best, okay? He goes and fucks the girl to death. Makes her believe it's all about them. He's getting rid of Senorita. The room is all nice and romantical and dark. And then once it's done and she leaves, we see him walk up to a, uh, you know, a camera hidden in the corner. You know, he's looking up at the camera like this. And now we know that he recorded her. And oh, while she was leaving, she did mention that she is waiting for Mimi to die so that Mimi can give her all of the, you know, all of the stock and then they'll have control of the company. So score one for Hakeem. Next thing we know, when Cookie is sitting there talking to Jamal, okay, Andre busts in and says, Oh, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but uh, Mimi is dumping all Empire stock. I'm about to call all the stockholders and tell them, you know what, to buy up everything. So he's over on the phone and he's calling. You know what? Buy it all. Buy it up. Okay. Whoever he's talking to on the phone is just like, well, you know, well, where do you want us to buy it with? And he's just like, oh, I have a trust fund set up for my son. Yeah, just just use that. And uh, then, of course, the, the memory of his son not being around anymore, you know, that he's passed on. Uh, he throws the phone. Okay. And then Cookie gets up. She's just like, oh, no, baby. You know, he's hitting himself in the head. And, you know, Cookie's like, don't do that. And, you know, Jamal and Hakeem, they don't know what to do. They see that Andre is wigging out. And uh, they do what they used to do back in the day when he would have these breakdowns. You know, he's like, you know what, Andre, come downstairs. We we got a song for you. We, we got something for you. We want you to hear. So they go to the studio and they sing and actually a very touching song. It was you know, I was like, I, I had a little moment, you guys, and none of the songs this season especially have touched me, but um, I just was listening to them singing. I was just like, oh, I was just like being crazy. Just, you know, he had the tears and, 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 and you know, Jamal was singing and Hakeem was rapping and it was just like, it was a moment. It really was, okay, which is really good because the shit that I'm fixing to tell you after this is is going to hopefully this will take up for it so cookie tells lucius that mimi dumped all the stock okay and that they got the stock back the company is in control of the family again i forgot to tell you guys that hakeem told jamal and cookie that he had sex with camilla and recorded her and that he forwarded the information on to mimi and this is the reason why mimi is dumping the stock she's pissed at the fact that Camilla had sex with Hakeem and all the shit that she said. So when Cookie is telling Lucius that, he was just like, oh, okay. He said, I sure would like to see Camilla's face when Mimi dumps her. And Cookie is like, no, 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 you have to do that. Don't go over there. He's like, oh, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm going on home. Okay. Next scene, we see Naomi Campbell, Camilla. She's wiping off frantically. All of the window, I mean, the um, water spouts and spigots, and, you know, somebody is in a tub. We assuming that is Mimi. She's looking like she is um, in a very deep slumber. <laughs> okay. Lucius walks in. Now, how the fuck did Lucius get in the place? We don't know. Evidently, Lucius recorded her poisoning Mimi. Okay. He is like, you know, they ain't going to take too kindly to the fact that you killed that lady. You know, what was that you put in her drink? Was it arsenic or what? You know. She was just like, get out of here. What are you doing here? You know, he's got his phone still. He's recording. She was like, you know what? Hakeem is going to be pissed when he finds out that you sent that tape. And he was like, oh, no, 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 baby girl. I didn't send that tape. Okay, your boy Hakeem did. That's right. He sent it to your wife. And he's the reason why we are here in this unfortunate circumstances right now. All right, I didn't do none of this. Okay, and boy, it's going to be a tough life for you when they find out that you killed this lady. But I got an answer for you. What you need to do is go on and take them damn pills. Okay, he pulls out a gun. I said, what the fuck? She's looking like she don't have nowhere else to turn. Okay, she knows she just killed this lady. He supposedly has it on video, but he's pointing a gun at her. And she's just like, why don't you just kill me? He's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to kill you because that's too easy. I want you to kill yourself. Go on and take all them pills. So she looks around. And you guys, she takes all the fucking pills. He was like, that's right. Puts his gun away. He's like, rotten hell. And he walks out. I said. <laughs> Y'all, this shit was worse than some old Tyler Perry And I said, what the fuck is going on? Lee Daniels. You know, movies nominated for Oscars and everything. And here we, y'all, it was so bad. It was the worst acting. It was the most foolish plot. This is the problem that I have with some of the Empire storylines. When the writers get tired of, uh, of uh, um, a character or um, 
you know, a direction of a story. They just cut that shit. It don't be making no sense. It ain't logical or nothing. They just cut the motherfucker off. You mean to tell me that Camilla would have just sat there and killed herself? I just, I don't see it. The bitch is crazy. I would have at least seen her trying to figure out a way out of it. Trying to fight Lucius even. But you know what? Just kill her. I said, you guys, I don't know. I do not know, but I'm going to tell you something. If this season continues on in that kind of, you know, fool of fucking nigga tree, I don't think that we're going to make it for season three. And we might have to add another show to black girls on television. But yeah, this right here. Oh my God. What did you guys say? Wasn't it silly? I didn't believe that shit one bit, did you? Now you guys, Scandal made up for it. I was like, Scandal done fucked around and got good. Oh my God. I am so proud of Shonda and her team of writers. What they have put out these last couple of weeks is the shit that we've been wanting for the last few damn years, really. It was good as hell. All right, let me start at the beginning. So at first we think that Fitzden got... Um, the reporter Lillian pregnant because Lillian is going to a hospital pretty often and some ain't right. So Abby goes and tell him, you know what, you've been dipping your dick in all this dirty puss and now the bitch is pregnant. But we find out, no, she's not pregnant. She's been going there and she's been meeting with um, Andrew. You guys remember Andrew, the vice president? Okay, she's been meeting with him. That cannot be good news. While Olivia's talking to Melly and Olivia's telling her that she's got to get the Latino vote, so she needs to get the endorsement of Cardinal Suarez, Abby calls Olivia and is like, oh, bad news, we need your help. Next thing you know, you see Olivia walking. Okay, she walks into this hospital, sees Andrew in the um, wheelchair. When he talk, turns around and he starts talking, and you know, it's kind of flirt. I was like, oh, the fuck wrong with Andrew? He sounds like he's had a stroke. So Olivia's like, so why have you been talking to Lily? And he was just like, I told her. You know what? Your boyfriend started a, a war because you had been kidnapped. And she was like, I was kidnapped because of you. You were the one who got me kidnapped and tried to sell me off. He was like, I don't give a fuck about that. Somebody put a damn needle in my neck and gave me a stroke. That's why I'm like this now. You got hit by shrapnel. He was like, you can continue to believe that bullshit if you want to. Somebody put a damn needle in my neck. This is why I'm the way I am. And so Andrew is just pissed. He's bitter. He's going to get these motherfuckers back. So now Liv gets everybody together. It's Fitz, it's Liv, it's Melly, it's Elizabeth, it's David, it's, um, who else? Cyrus. They're in a big circle. It's dark in there. You know, they're trying to figure out how they can get rid of the Andrew problem. Elizabeth is so over this shit because he gonna fuck up her plans of getting into the White House. She's like, let's kill that motherfucker. Oh no, we can't just kill him. No, we're not doing this. It gave me flashbacks of when um, Hollis and what was the lady that Fitz killed? What was her name? Her, the judge, and Olivia and Cyrus. Remember, they would have all these round tables in Melly, and Fitz was very clueless to it. Okay, it reminded me of those days. But anyway, they try to figure out how to get rid of um, the problem of Andrew. For now, Melly, you go talk to Andrew because you guys used to get it in and maybe he still has feelings for you. And uh, we're going to destroy all the evidence, anything that has any link of Andrew to all of this, destroy it all. Now, Liv. Because Andrew and, the, you know, the fact that he's around again, she's starting to have these flashbacks of when she was kidnapped. And she's having a hard time sleeping while she's in bed one night. She can hear um, the um, Stevie Wonder song that was playing when she got kidnapped before. Okay, so she gets up out of bed. She walks down the hallway and she walks in her room, in the living room, and she's having the flashbacks and shit, you know, when the wine spilled and somebody grabbed her and then all of a sudden somebody grabs her mouth and then she wakes up. You guys, it's a dream. Oh my God. She jumps up, goes to work, and she tells Huck, you're the one who put a needle in his neck, right? And Huck was just like, yeah, you got me. <laughs> she tells them, everything connected Melly to Andrew, destroy it. Whatever trace it is, destroy it. Elizabeth, like I said, fuck, she want to kill the nigga, so she, she goes to the number one murderer in her book. She tries to even convince Huck to do it. Huck was like, I don't do that anymore. She was just like, yeah, go on and, go on and kill him. He said, I told y'all don't do that shit no more, honey. She backed up like, all right, this bitch ain't trying to get her back sliced up again. <laughs> now, flipping over to the Vargas team, Vargas, the brother, is having some issue with Cyrus. He now knows that Cyrus is probably the reason why shit is going bad for him. Francisco is now back ace boon coons with Cyrus and trusting him to his campaign more than the brother. So now the brother's like, something's going on here. He's looking at some footage that um, somebody that works for them is looking at, and he sees the gay evil secret service man he's like you know what well back that up let me look at that for a second okay so then we like uh oh he might be on to something Millie goes to see andrew okay she turns on the charm you know what 
I loved you, but you turned your back on me, you know, but maybe this is another chance. Maybe this is a chance for us to get together and be together. And, you know, I still love you. When he tried to get a little freaky with her, she was just like, ugh. And he was like, oh, what's the matter? Okay, do I discuss you? Well, bitch, the feeling is mutual. You discuss me too. I'm still telling that shit. Even the feminine walls of Millie doesn't work. She goes back to Olivia. She's all frantic. This is not going to work. I'm not going to win. She's whining. You know, Olivia's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. I'm going to fix this. But I need you to quit all this fucking whining and crying all the damn time and go do something else. Get the fuck out. Just leave me alone. I can't think with all this. So Olivia, because now that she doesn't have access to the president like she used to, well, she goes to the other side. The other side would be dear old dad. Goes to sit down, has dinner with her. It's so funny because Jake is always off to the side like, hmm. <laughs> What you need now, sis? She's telling them how, you know, she's got to get, you know, ears on Lillian, you know, figure out what exactly they about to do. Jake was like, well, do you want me to spy on her? <laughs> Seeing as I'm the head of the NSA. Olivia was like, tells her dad, I need you to listen in on her offices or whatever. Okay, so then he's like, tells Jake, son, can you go on and listen in? <laughs> he's like, sure, why not? Anything for sis. Olivia hates that she has to ask Jake for shit, but she ain't got no other choice. Dad says, but listen here, Olivia. Okay, when all this that you're trying to do the right way don't work out, okay, you know what you got to do. And she turns around, I'm not like you. I'm not you. I'm going to do this the right way. <laughs> he was just like, all right, baby girl, I'm just trying to tell you. That shit gets rough and you get backed in the corner. All right, you might have to go on and kill old bruh. Olivia don't want to hear that kind of talk. Next scene, we see Andrew, you know, he's having a little nightcap. Okay, warm milk. <laughs> shouldn't say that. Huck comes in, puts a needle in his neck. I said, oh my god, did Huck decide to go on and kill old boy? But next thing we see, he's actually in the underground bunker. And it's Abby in there, it's Olivia, and it's Huck. When Andrew comes to, Olivia's standing in front of him, she's like, look, we trying to protect you, somebody is trying to kill you. And he was just like, no, you guys are trying to kill me. And he, she's like, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm just trying to tell you. What is it going to take for us to get you to change this story that you done told to Lillian? Oh, you know what? It, you ain't got enough money. She was just like, yeah, that's what they all say until we put a number out there. How much you want? Ten million. Okay, five. No, ten. Seven. No, ten. Eight. He said, ten. If you, if you say anything else, it's going to be twenty million. Give me my fucking money and then we can talk. So she goes back to the group. He wants ten million dollars. Ten million dollars? Ain't nobody got no fucking ten million dollars. Elizabeth was like, fuck it, I do. I got five on it. Millie, you got any money to put on? Millie's like, hell no, I ain't got no money. I'm not the rich one around here. And Fitz was like, I gave you money when we divorced. And she was like, I've been through a fucking enough. I bet you you ain't gonna get nam none of my pennies. So then Fitz says, I got the other five million. So now we got the ten million. Now the candle is burning down, you guys. They got 48 hours. Lillian is going to put the story out. That's what they have heard Lillian say in her office to her staff. So Olivia goes back and they work out the deal with Andrew. At the $10 million, you need to sign this um, this this paperwork that says that you will, you know, you won't say anything. You're going to call Lillian. You're going to recant your story. He was like, I'll do it, but first put that money in my account. So hook. Go on and do what you got to do. Huck puts the $10 million in there. As soon as it's done, okay, he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm starting to think, yeah, I think I might want $20 billion. Yeah, and I would like a nice warm apple pie. I'm not going to never help you guys. I don't give a fuck what you do. I'm telling Lillian everything. So now they're just like, oh, my God. Andrew doesn't really care about the money. I mean, fuck, he's slurring in a wheelchair. Life is not too good. He's just full of bitter. He's mad. While they're in there talking, you know, Olivia's having these flashbacks again, okay? She's locked in this room, this bunker. It's kind of reminding her when she was locked in that room. You know, wherever the fuck she was. And yeah, so I'm just like, oh, old girl is losing it. So now, you know, everybody is getting a little worried. Abby goes back to Fitz and was like, you know what? Give Andrew a job. Just do something. Maybe he just needs to feel included and be back in the White House. And Fitz was like, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go tell the American people what I did. We're going to say that uh, I faked his assassination to drum up American support for the war. And we're going to keep Olivia and all the rest of them out of it. All right. And it'll all fall on me. Andrew will look like a hero. And, you know, she was just like, no, 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 this is not the time to fall on your sword. This is not a good idea. Yes, it is. Set it up. She was like, no, I don't want to do it. He said, set it up. <laughs> That's tough fits, y'all know. 
So Abby goes to tell Olivia the man is going crazy. He's about to do this. It's going to sabotage his whole political career. You guys know that Fizz don't give a fuck. Fizz ain't gave a fuck since the first term. Okay, he didn't even want the second term, remember? So when she tells Abby that, you know, Olivia's like, this is being presidential. He's taking it for the team. We all did what we had to do to protect him, and now he's protecting everybody, and now we won't all get told on, and, you know. So... Olivia now she's she's pre-orgasmic with the fact that her man is going to tell the whole world that he did something else and keeping her out of it. Everyone's like, what the fuck are you crazy? This is terrible. I'm in the White House right now. I want to continue to be in the White House. I am a big dog in there. I chew motherfuckers up and spit them out. I'm running that oval. And now you sitting here telling me that you want me to let him do this? This will ruin my career. And, and, and Olivia was like, but you've never been a monster, Abby. That's not you. And you know, how bad can it be? You can leave the White House and you can come work for me. I said, ain't this about a bitch? Okay, the fuck make you think I want to come work for your motherfucking ass? Okay, but you trying to get your ass in the damn White House. I said, oh, she must think Abby is a fucking fool. Abby looking at her like, oh, yeah, that'll be fun. Honey, Abby get in that elevator when she leave, and you can see it on her face. Yeah, she about to do some shit, okay? So she goes back, back down to the bunker. And, um, yeah, I'm going to show a motherfucker who's a monster around here. So she goes in there. She got a different deal to work out with Andrew. Now, at first, I thought she was going to kill him. But come to find out, no, she had him contact Lillian and change his story. It's now not about the fact that Olivia was kidnapped and all of that. Now it is about the affair that Millie and Aunt Andrew had. And when Millie and Olivia finds out, Olivia is pissed. She goes back and she tells Abby, I don't know what happened. Somehow, someway, Lillian got to Andrew. Andrew got to Lillian. Now he's changing his story. And now he's saying that, you know, they had a, had this affair. And Abby's just looking at her like, <laughs> mm, really? Olivia, now the slowly the realization is coming in that, oh, you're the reason that uh, Andrew got this story to Lillian. She was just like, Abby, no. Abby, you didn't do this. And Abby was like, let me tell you something, bitch. <laughs> I will not be working for you. I will be staying my ass right here in this office. What you need to do is turn in your badge. You cannot be, you know, gallivanting and skipping through the damn White House hallways without my knowledge. You turn that badge in. You are no longer welcome here. Okay, that bitch gonna walk and look at all her window like, I guess I done told her something. That damn Olivia's just like, what the fuck? So she goes and she sits down for a little while. She mad as hell now. Okay, now her girl done turned her back on the first fence. Cyrus, now Abby? Oh, no. She calls Jake. Uh, you know, she ain't got time for, you know, acting like she don't need him no more. Jake, I need you to get me into the White House. So next thing you know, you see Olivia. She prancing down the White House bunker, you know, hallway. Andrew was in the room. Oh, you done made it back. She was just like, you know what? Y'all know Abby came down here and y'all worked out a deal. Okay. But me and Melly know you better than anybody. What we need to do is come to terms on this. Try to figure out how we can, you know, fix this. But I cannot let you get that story out. Honey, Andrew got the talking out the side of his neck. You know what? You got a fucking big ass mouth. Is that all you do is talk? Because she was about to get into one of her Shonda speeches. You know how they be these real lengthy, you know. And he, Andrew cut that shit off at the knees like, bitch, nobody feel like hearing all of that. You ain't nothing to me. I can't, I don't give a fuck about you. Just like Fitz don't give a fuck about you. Y'all, he talking reckless. He calling her every hole in the book. He making her feel like shit. She's sitting there having flashbacks. I was like, my man, what you might want to do is stop all this. But he keeping on going. They keep on showing on Olivia you know she kind of leaning on a chair you know her, her grip is getting tighter on that chair he going on and on and on okay like Tammy said on Twitter last night bitch you is in a wheelchair okay you doing way too much for a nigga that can't get away ain't nowhere for you to go he obviously underestimated Olivia and you you just should not do that okay so he going on and on and all of a sudden that Olivia that bitch pick up the chair and she say something and next thing you know she hit that nigga in the head and I was like oh and then she's just still like hitting him and hitting him and hitting him and she's saying some shit you guys I'm sorry I couldn't even figure out what she was saying because I was so amazed at the fact that they were showing it his face was getting bashed in and the blood was splattering you know I should have known that it was going to be something like that because every time it would come back from a damn commercial it would be like this show has some <laughs> some scenes that a motherfucking kid should not be seeing only adults need to see this shit okay so i was just like oh i did not think that that 
was gonna happen. But honey, that bitch must have bashed this nigga head in till it was like a fucking pancake. <laughs> Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity bitch with the strawberries, okay? I'm just like all over her face. He's bleeding. I said, oh my God. <laughs> the fuck I'm talking about, Shonda? Yes. Yes. So then I was just like, um, yeah, Olivia, maybe you, you weren't supposed to do that. Next thing you know, Fitz comes in the door. Are you all right? Gives her a hug. I I'm, I'm promise you everything will be okay. While they hugging, Abby comes in. Uh, you know, she see Rudy Tooty fresh and fruity on the floor. And then she sees Olivia, crazed look in her face, blood splattered. Fitz looking like a, <laughs> I don't know. Olivia looks at Abby and is like, bitch, you got one hour to get in touch with Lillian and get her to recant that story, change it up. I don't give a fuck what you say or do, but I know that story better not come out. And uh, oh, yes, don't you ever in your motherfucking life cross me again. Walk the hell up out of there. <laughs> And he was just like, oh, okay. Now Andrew is dead. They've come up with this story that, you know, he slipped and fell. Complications from the stroke, you know. I said, boy, did that nigga slip and fall? You ain't never seen a bigger slip and fall than this one. He's a decorated hero, you know, all of this. Fitz is doing speeches, you know, the news is talking about him, all this. The gladiators come and pick Olivia up. We also see a scene when Melly, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, because it didn't even really matter that much, but Marcus got... Cardinal Suarez to endorse Melly. I and mean, that's a big deal because he's, she's conservative and all this and, you know, Catholic. Anyway, you know, I hate the fact that they treat Marcus like he just stupid, okay? And Marcus is tired of it. We're going to hear more about that later, but y'all, like I said, it don't even really matter. Melly did get the endorsement. Then we see a scene of Olivia. The gladiators have picked her up and, you know, she's like have them drop her off at dear old dad's house, okay? And the music is playing. Stevie Wonder, I mean, not Stevie Wonder, but um, uh, the Supremes, Diana Ross. Was it Diana Ross? I think it was, I can't even think of the song was. You're all I need. No, it's not that. I can't think of the song. But anyway, Olivia's walking up the pathway, you guys. Again, she's having flashbacks of the hallway to freedom when she was kidnapped. But she's walking up the stairs, you know, right when she gets to the door, the dad opens the door. He was just like, welcome home. And uh, I think that was the invitation. Letting you know that, bitch, you didn't cross over to the dark side now. <laughs> you have decided to come into the fold. Come on in this house. The whole pathway of reminding her of her terrorists was a symbolic of the corner that she has turned. Okay, Olivia is not the Olivia before kidnapping. She walks in the door, closes it, means she willingly accepts her new position. Y'all, I'm telling you, that shit was good as fuck. I am so glad the scandal is back. We ain't quite at how to get away with murder status, but we well on our way, and I'm good with that. All right, you guys, that's it. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is Ford's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.